So hello everyone and welcome to the first webinar that we have in this bite-sized research data webinar series. And today's webinar is going to be on how to password protect your research data. Um, there's been great interest in the these webinars. Uh, we've had a, a great number of, I suppose, um, contact about it. So um, when it comes to this, I suppose the, the main purpose of this, and we'll talk, I'll touch on it now in the next slide, but I suppose is, is we can see the importance of what it is to protect our data and more so to password protect our data. When we look at um, our policies that we have within the university, we have a research integrity policy, which calls out the importance of protecting our data. Research data management policy also calls it out. Our human research ethics policy, our code of good practice in research, and our data protection policy. So, and these are just, this is not an exhaustive list. There are other policies out uh, that we have that do call out the importance of protecting our data, confidentiality, and so on. And I suppose that's one of the reasons why we are uh, having these bite-sized research data webinars. When we look at, um, I suppose, the idea of research data, and this is, would have been just mentioned, and I won't read all this out, but this would have been mentioned in an email during the week. You can see the research data is quite broad in what it encompasses. It obviously encompasses our data in its kind of most traditional sense in terms of kind of numeric data like our Excel file, but it can also, it does, sorry, not all, it does encompass transcripts that we might have from interviews, from focus groups. It could uh, include photographs that we have. It could include videos that we might have. So it's quite broad in what it actually means to, uh, when you say our research data. And then when you look at our research integrity policy, so I went to start faster, when you look at our research integrity policy, it does call out in the policy that it's an unacceptable research practice uh, to where if we have research related issues, research data related misconduct. So not preserving our primary data, poor data management and storage. So I suppose this is a webinar here is just in an effort to, I suppose, provide training in how do we comply with our policy here, of the, in the, namely in this case, the research integrity policy. So I'm delighted to actually uh, have um, Theresa Hearn, our metadata and research data librarian, who's going to walk through us today on just the idea of password protecting our research data. Over to you, Therese. Thank you very much. Thanks a million, Sean. <clears throat> um, I'm just going to uh, share my um, screen there. Um, Can I share there, Sean? Um, yeah, you can. You should be able to there, Theresa. Yeah. Do you see the share option? Yeah. Sorry. Yes. No. Okay. So, um, uh, thanks for the introduction there, Sean. And um, yeah. So, according to to our policies, both MTU, um our funders, international policies, et cetera, um, sensitive data must be protected. Um, and what we're hoping to show you today, very briefly, um, this should be a quick enough webinar, is that it is very easy to password um, protect your files and folders. The key really is in, in documenting um, that process to, to show that you are compliant. And again, to, you know, to constantly be documenting your research integrity. Um, so we will. Sorry, uh, sorry to interrupt, Therese, now because I know it's just you're not sharing your screen yet, just in, in case you thought you are. Nope. Um, is that working now? No. Nope. It's, it's coming yeah. up there now. Yeah, there we have. If you want to put that on full screen, then you're good to go. Um, I might, I'm, I'm going to go between actually. Okay, um, perfect. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah, I'm going Thanks very much, Therese. Uh, Take a risk now and do live um live use of the internet um so uh we can we can see how that goes but anyway um so if we just head straight into it really um and step number one um the easiest step of all for password protecting your data um any of your research data Sean outlined um what we mean by research data but especially um sensitive data is to use your mtu issued hardware your laptop has an inbuilt um password protection system um and this this is accepted and this is um you know best practice for um for 
protecting your data in the first instance. Um, and then beyond that, um, within the software is to just use system password protections. Just um, make sure if you are looking um, at, uh, you know, advice on how to protect your data, that it is from an authoritative source. The most authoritative is from our Microsoft um, uh, providers, really. And um, so these systems, password protection, they're proved and they're ready to go for all your files onto your folders and external drives. Um, so first up, um, we'll go down to uh, file protection, essentially, and literally, um, as I say, I'm going to do a live um, protection of a file. Um, here I have just a mock data set. Um, this is just, I suppose, a standard example, really, an example of what um, data looks like. I'm just going to shove that onto the screen there now. And um, on this, so you just have your file open. We literally go to file, info. We then go to protect workbook. And here, um, the second item down is encrypt with a password. And we just do exactly what it says on the tin. Um, you can pick your own password here. The key piece of information is do not forget your password. So um, again, it's recommended that you would utilize um, a password manager. Um, so I will just pick one there. And that's okay. And then it asks you to re-enter that uh, for security. Click okay, and we are protected. Um, so if anybody is is looking around, if anybody say say you left your laptop open on your desk, um, it's just a further level of protection there uh, with a password for specific files down at file level. If we want to remove that password, then again, um, we just go back into the file, um, back into info, back into protect workbook, and um, we just literally delete that password and um, the protection has gone off it then. Um, if you do need to do that. So um, nice and easy. That's our first two uh, sets of password protection done for our hardware and our um, and our files. Um, next up for password protection of folders. Um, Microsoft does allow you to encrypt your folder. Now, I'm going to be 100% honest and say that it didn't allow me to do it um, on my system. It said something about certs, but it's it's an it's an encryption in that it it um I suppose it literally jumbles up the information so that it's unreadable. So Microsoft doesn't add a password protection to folders. However, um there is a compatible seven zip folder password protection available. Um and it's 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 integrated uh with our Microsoft folders. Um so it uh, so again, look, it's easily done. Um, it does involve um downloading and installing the latest version of 7-Zip, which we did have to do anyway, um, for something to do with uh, I think it was something to do with the IT breach uh, recently, but but lots most people will have um 7-Zip, but it's it's just easily downloaded. Um um and uh and IT are you know uh, it 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 does it is an again an authoritative source of of protection. Um, so I'm gonna do this live again. Um, I'm just gonna bring this across. Uh, bring these instructions across again, actually. And um, so here I have just um, I suppose I could go back. Um, but this is this is just when you open up the the seven zip file manager. That's what the the icon will be when you download it. It'll be on your desktop. Um, Seven Zip File Manager. Go into uh, go through your own files. So um, it just goes through the hierarchy of your files. Um, um, find the file that you um want to uh add. Um, 
to the archive that you want to add a password to. Um, and in this case, it's this mock data set file um, that I wish to add. So I'll just highlight that, add. Um, then this screen will come up. Um, and the key parts of that, so, so I have my file name here, uh, folder name, excuse me. So it's the folder in this case that I'm looking to password protect. You can also go down to file level with this, um, but it's just uh, this folder that I'm looking to protect at this point. So again, I'm going to enter my password. Um, and um, the, the best encryption method is this AES slash 256. Um, and uh, Again, it's kind of exactly what it does on the tin. Um, when you go into your folder there, um, that this item here now is is password protected. So um, I guess you um, yeah um, I suppose you could just go with with this the the seven the you know the the, the password protected file um, in in your files um, and go from there. Um again, look, you need to you need to remember the password um and uh utilize a good password manager for that. Um but here we are and your file is protected. Say for example, it could be photograph sensitive with sensitive information, um uh, you know, survey data, whichever you could have, you know, um sensitive information from say art therapy sessions or any of the, the areas that we deal with um, throughout the institution. Um, there's so many. Um, so that's where we are on that. Again, um, to uh, you can extract that information then um, by going back to it. Um, we can extract the information. It'll then look for the password and um, it'll just be what we set up. Um, Click OK and um, yeah, it's just that I have the, the file open, uh, but I promise it, it will open um, your data um, and uh, in this case, uh, a CSV uh, form. Um, so, yeah, so that's your protecting your folders with um, passwords. Um, I'll just go back to the presentation there now again. Um, to keep me on track. And then finally, um, I suppose if there is a requirement to have um, external drives, I mean, for good, um, for good data preservation, anyway, we should be storing um, our items in, in more than, than one place. So, um, you know, we should have it um, available on an external drive, a secured external drive. So that would need to be physically secured as well. Um, but we can also add um, a password protection to that. So just in case somebody does pick it up, um, that that's encrypted uh, with a password. Um, for this, again, um, just going to do a live demo here. Um, I think you should be able to see this on the, on the screen. So if we just literally select start, um, we go to settings, um, where are we here? And we go down to device encryption. Um, we can then there's just, uh, this bit locker, bit locker settings within that. Now I often just search for bit locker as well. Um, just, I suppose, just because I know that they're all in there. Um, it's not, um, completely intuitive um it's like they they want to hide this for some reason but anyway um so i have a usb in my laptop right now um and uh the that drive is the bit locker is off for it however if i just turn on the bit locker this will come up and um essentially um, we should be okay for time, but um, just in case this takes a bit long, it will, um, so it initializes the, 
the BitLocker and um, it'll then ask you for a password to um, unlock that drive. So every time you would put that USB um, into um, into a piece of hardware um, to, to extract the information, it could be the same with an external um, hard drive, a larger hard drive. Um, it will ask you for the password that you have entered. Um, there is also there's a way of retrieving the BitLocker for this as well. Um, but yeah, I can I'll just go ahead and um, enter a password. Um, I don't have a smart card. Um, so we'll just go ahead. Um, so obviously the most ideal way is to remember your password and um, possibly using a, a password manager. Um, but you can um, kind of print the recovery key or save it to a file. Um, so that's what that looks like there if it's printed to PDF. Um, is going against all my file naming conventions um, but I might do a session on some other day but anyway um, so uh, file is there somewhere and it it, it, it it just you can just just look for the the bit locker key and it will um, allow you to open that external drive um, so again look you, you know this this choice involved as well you can just use the you encrypt just the used disk space or you can encrypt the entire usb um depending on the nature of your project um and we'll just start encrypting there and um yeah that's that's that really um that's that done so um and i know from from experience that anytime i i will put that USB in, um, it will request the password. So again, it's just another layer of um, of protection for any sensitive data that you have. And again, if you're documenting this, it's just you're you're ticking the boxes. Um, it's an easy process and it's easy to document. And um, that's what we were hoping to uh, get out of today. We're hoping that you will take away from today just to get you thinking about your data. Um, thinking about the requirements of the policies that that Sean mentioned initially and um, that it is it is easy enough just working through um, the requirements and as long as um, as long as you are um, documenting um, these small steps then then you know our, our research integrity can be proven essentially and um, yeah I think that's that's me done um, Sean, so short and sweet. Brilliant. It was uh, very good, uh, Therese. Thanks very much for that. Um, there's a couple of questions there now, which is uh, great. I'm just looking to, yeah, perfect. So where I have a couple of questions, uh, but uh, let's go with people in, in the room first. So yeah, just make sure I'll do them in order there. So, so do you know if a st uh, MTU staff have access to a password manager? Yeah, that was actually, that's a good question. So you mentioned password manager a couple of times. I did. And I, did. I think that I was going to actually, it was one of my things as well, maybe to elaborate on that. Um, I did, and I I am going to have to take that offline. <laughs> I will, um, I look into it, um, Sean. It's, um, I, I, I'm not, I'm not hundred percent sure right now. Um, I need to look into it. I haven't been able to find anything um entirely obvious, um and uh yeah, so, so that might involve getting in contact with uh with IT. Okay, so, let me get back to on that one. No, we might follow. No, because that's it was an interesting one with my, when you mentioned it. So we, it is something we'd look into there, and maybe it's something that we can maybe mention in one of the follow up webinars. Then, if yeah, we have sure. more I can information, see, I can see if there's an MTU recommended yeah. one, but there would be. I suppose there would be kind of you know, um, open password managers that that would be available, hope, pro possibly provided by Microsoft, again, um, that might fit in with all of our um with all of our software. So the next one then, and it's I know the it's kind of it was fixed up in the comments as well, but we do mention, and I, I mean I'll take it that we do mention or you do mention your know, password protect, and then you mention encrypt. 
Like, are they one and the same, or they do do they do different mm. things? Um. So I suppose you can. I suppose I would describe it as you can encrypt something with a password. So um, encryption can mean um, I suppose a number of things. Um, it can mean um, you know, kind of anonymizing data. It can mean co codifying data or or software or or files or whatever. Um, whereas password protection, um, I suppose is is a is an is an element. It's it's one element of of encryption um in that you can encrypt something with a password and then only the person with the password can can um view that or you can um again make something unreadable um by you know essentially jumbling jumbling it up um uh you know so it's machine readable but it's not um human readable um now it might not be machine readable either um but you can you can um anonymize something you can jumble it up and um you wouldn't necessarily need a password you would I, I guess you would need a key um to uh to to change that encryption it's just it's a specific type of encryption um I would say my definition for for password protection is thank you next week, yeah, yeah so yes yeah, sorry no go on yeah. yeah so next week we will be talking about different types of encryption so yeah. um in in this case it's um it will be all to do with research integrity and um again focusing on um sensitive data and the methods for um for encrypting that so that it remains sensitive and that it's not readable to anybody that it shouldn't be super trace that's that's great uh, and look that i think that's a good point is I think like with the webinars, they're all kind of related and in a way it's to do a workshop on all of them, but I suppose what we're trying to do with the webinar is just be very pointed that this is the focus on password protect, but obviously that's going to be related then to the next webinar that we'll have next uh, Thursday, which will be on encryption. Okay, so next question there, when I have sensitive data and we're talking about archiving, are there any recommended compression methods to use or is this irrelevant in this term? Um, I suppose... Um, for for this webinar, essentially, I I um I again I would have to take that offline. Um, this is so I was just dealing specifically with password protection, um here. So um, uh, yeah. I suppose that's more of a technical question. Um, in terms of software, um, in terms of compression, um. Yeah that um yeah i i i i probably i i don't feel qualified to, to answer that at the moment anyway thanks very much Therese. that's absolutely fine um next one there should we have a bit locker uh for our own laptops as they are a fixed drive i mean yeah um you can so so the option is there to to turn on the bit locker um for your entire um drive and um and encrypt that entire drive if if you feel so so i suppose mtu hasn't done it as a default um but um you know and so so that, i mean there is a certain amount of autonomy here um for you to decide as a researcher which of your data you should be um protecting and which you don't necessarily have to um you know um we I suppose it's it's possibly getting into a different area, but um we we don't necessarily want to close off everything either. Um and that's a decision you would need to make in the context of your own project and in your own work and on your own work, I would suggest. Perfect. Thanks, Trace. Um so when you were showing the the bit about the USB, which is really really good actually uh well actually everything was good you know but that, that, I, it was all i'll stop there though it was all, it's all very good but anyway when you were showing the bit about the usb will that work for usbs when you use them on printers here at mtu um again i'll take that offline and have a look literally later myself yeah. um yeah. we um i <laughs> i've literally only had access to a printer in the past few hours um here so um there's been so much drama over printers but um yeah um we can have a look at that um i'm not 100 percent certain 
sorry about that but um yeah no. we can take it offline and answer that perfect sure. I think the next question then about documenting password protection, we've, that is the password manager, if I, if, if I interpret that correctly. What do you mean by documenting the password protection? Sorry, by that I actually mean, I mean, um, sorry, I have a slide on that here. Um, are you seeing that? Not yet. Um, sorry. So by documenting it, I mean, what I mean is by documenting it in, in your research plan, in your, in your research data management plan or in your um, ethics application that, um, that, you, that you may have to submit, that, um, you know, that you're documented throughout the research life cycle. So what your hopes are at the start of the project, how you would plan to um, protect sensitive data. Um, and then if there's any changes to that, that that's documented. And then um, for the end of your project, um, how you actually did protect um, and or preserve um, any sensitive data. Um, again, just that that is all documented. Um, again, we'll, we'll possibly talk about the data management plan um, throughout the, the other webinars. But um, yeah, it's it's just about so it's all very well to say, well, you know, I I I did password protect my um sensitive data. But it's it's just proving it, it's just getting it in writing, the method that that you did that by and a data management plan is the best yeah. place to do that. Yep, that's actually very, very good. Um Okay, so when you mentioned backing up data, if I put my data on MTU's OneDrive, I assume that is backed up. Is that sufficient? Sorry, say that again. Um, so uh, you mentioned backing up data. If I put my data on MTU's OneDrive, I assume that is backed up. Is that sufficient? Um, yes, essentially, it's 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 on the cloud. Um, you know, we have um, there's plenty of information out there from IT, um, to tell us that that is backed up. Um, in terms of data preservation, um, best practice of data preservation, it is always good and it is recommended to have that in two other separate areas as well so this would be for um again this would be documented in a data management plan this would be for high level um research and for high level adherence to to best practice um that you would have those in um two other protected sources just in case the worst happened and um the you know your institutional system for whatever reason was wiped out um and it's just again it's just showing that you are um um you know you're doing everything you can in your power to protect your data um but for the most part yes um you know we have we have um <clears throat> we have assurances that um that your OneDrive is the best place to store um your information that you want thanks. to keep secure. And thanks, Tres. And that links in nicely to the next one. So does the use of MT OneDrive storage count as password protection for all vice and folders within it due to the authentication process required to log in? Um it does actually, yes. And um you'll see a lot of institutions that have written on this that that have um you know guides on this that um that yes, that that is that is true. It's 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 the it's our largest um level of protection really, and it's the easiest way to to protect um your information is to utilize the MTU systems. Um, they're extremely expensive, and there's an you know an awful lot of really good people working on them, and um yeah, they're you know they're there for a reason, and they are our best asset really in terms of protecting um our information. But then I, I didn't thinking, and this is thinking where we're going in another two webinars, a reason, maybe a rationale, correct me now if I'm wrong now here, Therese, but mm -hmm. a rationale for protecting a particular file is if mm -hmm. then you wanted to maybe share that file somewhere else, so maybe externally. And like that, that, there's obviously different mechanisms there. But I suppose that's that's one reason to maybe password protect a particular file. So when somebody's at the other side, 
Open. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Um, not everybody is going to be able to, you know, you're not, you, all your collaborators aren't necessarily going to be within MTU, um, and there, you know, there, there may come a point, and probably, definitely will come a point where you will have to remove that information, um, from the protection of the MTU system, um, but we have ways and means of um protecting that also, um, you know, we're under big umbrella organizations in terms of HEA net and that um that again look we can you know we can easily and um and efficiently uh protect stuff outside the MTU system as well. Super. Thanks for and I think that's our third webinar where we're going to be talking about our well when I say we it's trays is going to be talking about uh, sharing the data or sh sharing your data uh, and externally we won't touch that but anyway so we'll come back to that then uh, another question then I mean so is it correct to say on a proposal so uh, that our laptops are currently encrypted unless we use a bitlock encryption. Well, they're they're encrypted. They're they're password protect. They're encrypted with password protection. Yeah. Um. Uh. So, um. The only person that can access your laptop is you. Um. You know, unless and and you know, we have policies for not sharing passwords, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So all of those policies and protections are in place to say that um that our our um. I mean, I suppose in terms of if if you want to, if you if you're if you're it depends on how you're defining encryption. If if you mean that every single file within um your password protected MTU laptop is um is is not readable to external sources, then no, it you know, um unless you individually or um if you go about encrypting your entire drive, um, then they're not encrypted in that sense. Um, they they are, however, password protected. Um, so um, again, you know, it's up to you. I mean, we have to take into account, um, I suppose, you know, day to day usability, um, of our systems as well, and and of our projects running, um, and um. You know, n not everything has to be encrypted or protected all the time. It's usually um sensitive data, um whatever reason for that, be it you know industrial secrets or um or personal information or um you know sensitive financial data and so on, um so. Yeah, I, I, I mean, it, it is fair to say, I mean, if, if you go to I, essentially IT's website, they will talk about um, the the OneDrive and the protections that it that it allows. And, and they'll talk about the, the MTU, I suppose, hardware system in general and the protection that 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 allows. Um, and you could, you know, document those protections then. But um, our entire system is is not um not human readable if um unless unless you set it that way okay thanks very much Trace. so i'll just take two more and then we'll stop there okay so if any more come in we just won't have time because i'm quite keen that we finish on time here so next one i think is quite a straightforward one and so what is the name of the program used to protect folders seven zip yeah that's right yeah, that's what i was thinking yeah seven zip <clears> as well <throat> perfect and then the last question so and this is a good one uh what if someone leaves the institution and files are password protected? Well, I mean, that's, you know, that's part of that succession management. Um, that yeah. would all be part of, of your data management for any project. Yeah. And again, that would be documented in a data management plan. So a data management plan um, describes um, who has access to what yeah. um, and um, in what format and so on um so yeah that 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 would cover that um again they're all you know they're dealt with in in our policies that we would need to have a proper succession plan um in terms of of data management perfect thanks very much and i think uh look i think that that's good on time there uh so so today's webinar was, or this afternoon's webinar was on how to password protect your research data. Next week, we're going to look at how to encrypt your research data. So there's obviously a certain relationship between them, but it is kind of distinct as well. So next week, we'll uh, look at doing some uh, on that. Okay. So look, thanks everyone for, uh, for joining and uh, hope to see you next week as well. Thanks very much. Brilliant. Thanks.